hi guys welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for coming on here today to watch this video and also welcome to the brand new month of march i hope you have a beautiful fruitful month and i think to be honest we all need that judging by everything that's going on in the world right now so today guys i'm trying a different format i'm doing something different from my regular single fragrance reviews and i want to share my top 10 fragrances for 2022 thus far so that's quote unquote thus far you know so like i said in the title the year is still very young my preferences could change but for now these are the perfumes i'm like reaching out for they're the ones i'm loving they are the ones i'm wearing most often you know so i find out that i as i use more fragrances as i learn more about notes accords all of that my taste in perfumes has totally evolved and i'm becoming a lot more tolerant of some notes i didn't necessarily care for before I used to be about the warmer, vanillic or nutty fragrances, but I think now I'm open to a wider range, including some, you know, more floral leaning options and even oods. So, you know, enough of my rambling anyway, let's go straight to the business of the day. So at number 10, we have YSL Libre. I call it Libre, but it's spelled L-I-B-R-E. I don't know if it's Libre or Lib. I've heard people call it all sorts. My French is not perfect, so I'll call it YSL Libre just for the sake of this video. I have an attachment to this fragrance because it was one of those fragrances with which I started my fragrance journey. So I really love it because YSL Libre is fierce. It just gives fierce, bold, independent woman vibes. That's what it is to me. It's lavender, orange blossom, black currant, jasmine, I think a sprinkling of musk and cedar in the dry down. So it's perfect. It makes a statement. Every time I wear it, it makes a statement. The longevity is to die for. It's really great for like a night out. On my skin, it mostly gives off the lavender, um, the amber and i think the musk definitely the musk for sure though i mean it may not be everyone's cup of tea it may be it may lean a little bit masculine or a little bit more masculine on some people as i've read but that's not my experience though yeah so ysl libre fantastic fragrance this is my number 10 at number nine we have an amber fruity floral by Mark Jacobs. So we have Mark Jacobs Decadence. Beautiful bottle. Beautiful. This bottle gets me every single time. It's such a work of art. It's so beautiful. I love it. So this is the Mark Jacobs Decadence, also decadent. It's an uh, eau de toilette. It's a uh, I wear it on a, a lot of hot days when I just want an airy, fairy, sweet vibe. You know, that airy, fruity, sweet type of vibe. There's pear and black currant here. So it gives the opening the sweetness. And this is rounded off by the jasmine, amber, and cashmere wood in the dry down. It's not very long lasting on me though. And I think I mentioned it when I reviewed this fragrance in one of my earlier videos. But I love it still. You know, you smell like a juicy, delicious fruit wearing this. And the musky amber dry down is very, is mildly sexy. Not in your face type of sexy, but it's just mild and, you know, quite sexy on its own. It's not over the top, you know. So you just smell pleasant. You smell nice. It's a very nice fragrance, honestly. And um, I don't regret buying this and this is my number nine fragrance i love mark jacobs decadence beautiful 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 fragrance number eight on my list is jean paul gaultier scandal the bottle looks scandalous like the name implies this is my second bottle i just finished one but i can't do without this fragrance i have to have it in my collection at every point in time i got a smaller bottle this time i finished the 100 ml i think this is what's this size i don't i think it's 50 ml or something like that i don't know but 
This is a sexy, bold honey balm for all my honey lovers out there. You will absolutely love this one. You know, Scandal has some mandarin orange at the top. So it's a bit citrusy, like for the first, let's say, 5-10 minutes. And then, boom, the honey and the flowers hit you. And it lasts and lasts and last this is one of the most long wearing fragrances i actually have in my collection there's some caramel and patchouli here somewhere i think the caramel and honey combo creates like the sweetness that some people may find a bit excessive but i love 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 this fragrance i wear it on nights out like when i want to be noticed and it never fails to get me compliments honestly like it may appeal more to a younger crowd, maybe those below 30. I don't care. I think it's ideal for any woman who just wants to feel sexy, sweet, edible. I tell you, I love this fragrance. I love the bottle. <laughs> you know, these inverted legs. Are, oh my God. This is absolutely amazing. This fragrance is a hit for me. Club, party, if you want to wear it to work, you can. But I, to be honest, I don't advise this for work. I think the attention it brings would be a little too much for the office environment. But I mean, if you're, if you want that attention, why not? Fantastic fragrance. I love Scandal. Definitely love it. Will always want to have it in my collection. So that's my number six. Following closely at number seven, hmm, Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. This is another beautiful one. I feel like if you like Scandal, you're likely to be here for this fragrance as well. Um, you know, I think they both they they are both somewhat similar in terms of the note profile. You know, it has a similar note profile to Scandal, but replace the honey in Scandal with almond and coffee in this one. You know, so there's also some tuberose, vanilla, amber, patchouli in here. I think there's some tonka bean. So this is a little like black dress, heels, your alcohol, great music, loud music in a club type of fragrance. It's all that jazz. It's very feminine, sexy, sweet. It will surely get you noticed both by men and women alike. It has all the tuberous, amber and patchouli. Yeah, but these are so well blended, you know, with the almond and the coffee. So you, you even tend not to pick up the individual notes. I on, The only note I pick up really strongly in this thing is the coffee somewhere in the middle. But all the other notes are so nicely blended and you know it just becomes this very sexy cozy inviting at the same time and you know with i think it does have moderate longevity on me this lasts me about let's say five hours without having to respray let me spray it now i love the smell of this oh fantastic so this is um good girl carolina herrera absolutely amazing this is my number seven fragrance that i'm loving right now okay so for number six well notice i'm not getting into too much technicalities with the review just you know expressing how these fragrances make me feel i'll leave the more in-depth reviews of notes and accords for my single fragrance review videos but this one is strictly me talking about the perfumes i'm wearing right now how i feel about them what I would wear them with, you know, that sort of thing. Just a little more casual, you know, discussion. All right, guys, so we're on number six now. And this is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. This is classic refinement. This is like class refinement sophistication in a bottle. Fantastic fragrance. It leans a bit oriental. It has some flowers, I think bergamot, some coffee, vanilla, the ever-present patchouli. <laughs> so it feels fresh, floral, but still gourmandish at the same time. And it's a really cozy scent. I really like it. I love it for work. You know, it's not loud, but it has very good projection and sillage. It's very great if you're looking for a fragrance that can work well in the office. You can't go wrong with Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. Fantastic fragrance. Very well done. Very solid. I love this fragrance. 
It's an absolute must have in my collection. Right. So number five, we're halfway through the list right now. Almost there, guys. Here we have Elisab, Girl of Now. My beautiful pistachio angel. I really love this fragrance. Elisab, Girl of Now. Uh, I love it. I love the bottle. It's so pretty. So Jeremy Fragrance, he's a popular YouTuber in the fragrance community. He put me onto this one. I watched a number of his videos where he had such glowing reviews of this fragrance. And boy, was I impressed. This is an almond, sweet, nutty, vanillic fragrance. It's like a sweet pastry. You know, whenever I use this, I feel like I feel like I smell like a warm, cozy French boulanger whenever I wear this. Honestly, you know, the longevity, projection, the ciliage are great. And with this, it gets me compliments every time, every single time. I'm not sure my skin picks the patchouli in this, even though it says in the notes that it's here. But, you know, I'm fine with just the naughty, caramelly sweetness of this fragrance. I use it mostly in the daytime and it's definitely worth every penny. So this is my number five. I'm using it quite a bit. You can see I've made a very significant dent on this one. I love this fragrance, an absolute must have. If you like, you know, that sweet essence. At number four, okay, here it gets interesting. So I have a tie between Dior Poison Girl and black opium eau de parfum intense so these two fragrances are a tie for me i couldn't decide to be honest they're so similar to me so i just made it a tie just because <laughs> so it's i'm you know i'm still going to review dear poison girl in detail but for the purpose of this list i'll stick to how i feel about these two fragrances they share a lot of similarities, a whole lot of similarities. They're both gourmand. They have a lot of sweetness. They both open a bit citrusy, but then they dry down really warm and sweet. And then the pink pepper and patchouli in the black opium, it gives it a very cozy spiciness and then envelops you in this warm, sweet scent cloud. And then you have Poison Girl, which is a, a lot more creamy so you this is so syrupy you can even see it in the juice it's very syrupy it's creamy maybe the tonka bean and almond are responsible for that yeah so they both smell so much alike very versatile you know you can you can you can wear it for work you can wear it for casual outings you can wear it for date nights honestly they smell exactly the same to me and i love them both equally it's sexy it's understated it's sweet it's cozy to be honest you can't go wrong with this too poison girl um, black opium absolutely fantastic they're both number four on my list i love them Number three. Now, this one is not very popular, or at least I haven't heard too many people talk about it. So my husband got it for my birthday last year when I started developing an interest in like oud-based fragrances. This one is called Maison Oud's Amira Eau de Parfum. This is Fruity, musky, floral, earthy. I absolutely adore this fragrance. Let me spray it again just to get a whiff of the scent. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, that fruit. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's, very, it's a very nice intro to the world of oud fragrances, which we all know can be... A bit of an acquired taste that can take some getting used to. So it projects really well. You know, the peach fruity notes at the beginning, they mix very well with the musk and patchouli. So it's sweet, but then it's earthy. And then you get occasional whiffs of the oud, which warms the scent up very well. It's not too animalic, and that's why I like it, because I don't really like that burnt rubber, burnt tire smell that you're 
hardcore old fragrances have. I am not a fan of that. So this is like a very gentle intro into the oud um, world. It's very wearable, you know, especially if you're an oud newbie. It's very, very wearable. I wear this on nights out, you know, and I realize that I t tend to pair this with like kaftans or traditional attires more than like casual clothing. I don't know, for whatever reason, it just... I, you know, I tend to wear quite a lot of um, kaftans, Middle Eastern type clothing. So whenever I wear those, I, I wear it with this perfume. So really nice, really nice intro to Oud. I really love it. It has good projection, good silage. You know, you smell nice when you walk into a place and then it doesn't really overpower you with the Oud. So I love, love, love this fragrance. It's really nice. Number two. We're getting closer to the finish line here, guys. And honestly, it was quite tough deciding which I wanted as my number one or two. But I finally went with Chanel Coco Mademoiselle as my number two fragrance. To me, this is my timeless, elegant, womanly masterpiece. I can't stop raving about Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Whenever I have this on, I feel rich, classy, empowered. I don't know what it is about this fragrance. Honestly, it projects so beautifully, leaves such a lovely central. So when you walk into a room, it just makes a statement. You don't need to say anything. It's soft. It's delicate. It's floral. It's musky. It's citrusy at the start. It's just so captivating. I love Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. I'm never going to stop wearing this and I plan to always have one in my collection. It's timeless. I'm not sure you can. I mean, of course, I'm not sure it's everyone's cup of tea. Some people tend to think that it might be a bit mature, but Nah, I don't care. It's a fantastic fragrance. I'm a mature woman. So what the hell? Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. This is my number two. I love it. Dun, 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 dun. Drum roll, please. The queen just entered the building. And this is my number one. This has to be the best fragrance I have come across or I've ever come across in my entire life. I kid you not. It's Nuda Veritas by Atelier de Ors. It's, um, I think it was launched in 2018. It's a niche fragrance, um, obviously, for sure. This is Orange Blossom bergamot jasmine oak moss patchouli blended magnificently honestly <laughs> the first time i tried this fragrance i couldn't go back this is an amazing scent i haven't smelled anything like this before and quite frankly i'm not a huge fan of like airy breezy aquatic leaning fragrances i'm not but for this one oh my goodness oh my goodness this is this is worth being called niche this is worth paying more money for i tell you there's some other notes i think beyond the orange blossom and the ones i mentioned earlier but i'm not going to get into that because the ones I mentioned earlier are the ones that stand out to me. It's definitely predominantly a white floral fragrance. I feel like a goddess whenever I have this on. It's just fresh, summery. It's elegant, but it's innocent. And then it just makes me happy and joyful. And I'm going to spray it now. Happy, joyful, lovely, amazing fragrance. This fragrance is beast mode. And, you know, because it feels so floral, you don't think it will project that much. You don't think it will last. This lasts forever on my clothes. Like, I've washed... The last time I used it, I went through, like, two or uh, three um, wash cycles. And I still get a whiff of it on the clothes. It's crazy. I, can't, I, don't, I don't know how it's... But as far as I'm concerned... I can wear this during the day. I can wear it at night, in the afternoon, wherever. But 
I guess given the airy, you know, breezy aura, I think it's very well suited for like a hot summer day. You know, so picture like a summer dress, a garden, great food, just ease, peace, re relaxation. You know, the longevity, like I said, is beast mode. You have to wash several times for it leaves your coat and a little goes a long way. You don't have to overspray this at all. It's a sure compliment getter for me. Anytime I wear this, I get so many compliments and it's just all round perfection in my opinion i mean it has these very lovely gold crystals and that's i think this is a signature for this house of atelier de Oz. is something they have in most of their fragrances honestly this is like niche done right what i don't like is niche fragrances where you pay a premium and then you know it's like you're smelling your regular schmegler designer fragrances this is niche done right it's worth every dime that i paid i want to try out other fragrances from this house because you know this one is oh god i can't stop raving about it i definitely would recommend this for anyone who wants floral perfection in a bottle this is my number one right now like i said my taste may change i could find something else that beats it but for now this is my number one fragrance, Atelier de Oz, Nuda Veritas. Fantastic fragrance. Stand here. <laughs> All right, guys. It was so much fun doing this. I hope you can get some inspiration from the list. I hope you enjoyed the video. These are the fragrances I've been reaching out for more often this year. The list may change, like I said, as the year progresses, but for now, this is it. Please let me know in the comment section if you've tried any of these fragrances, if you have a different opinion, you know, your thoughts, what are your recommendations? Do you have any other fragrances you think are worth trying? Please let me know. Also, subscribe if you're new on here. Please, please like the video if you're connected or if you're connected with the content and then share with other fragrance lovers that you know. Guys, till I see you on my next video, have a lovely day. Bye.